Well, welcome, Clement. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your leadership. Thank you. And thank you. As, thank you. As always, we want to begin by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands that we are on, as well as acknowledging our ancestors and those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We want to acknowledge all the elders and community stewards whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So, Again, thank you for being here. Can you please tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, the origins of the work that you do as the founder of the BIPOC Foundation? All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Sister Blessed. Um, myself, obviously, um, a, an immigrant who migrated to uh, Canada um, now just over a decade ago. I think it's about 12 years now that, I've, that we've lived here. Came here as a student. Um, always seen myself always you know growing up being part of the community always have loved to be part of the community and have loved to be able to um, see how i can make a difference uh, uh and in any community where i found myself and um you know it's what you know informed my journey and uh, graduated and you know got married to a partner as well who was you know, extremely ambitious, right? And, you know, just entrepreneurial focused. So um, we had to juggle things. And then, you know, we started our business, uh, Daniola Corporation, uh, which, you know, as, as underrepresented founders in Canada had its unique challenges. And uh, through doing that work and through the hurdles and steps that we had to face, um, you know, trying to create the Nola Corporation. And that is what has informed, informed our work as well to uh, begin an organization called BIPOC Foundation, an organization that we have decided to model, uh, you know, through our journey so that the steps and the hurdles and the resources that we had found it difficult to um, access as we were trying to start and grow our business, that those coming behind us would not have to pass through those hoops and those hurdles to be able to start and grow their businesses. So just uh, in a nutshell, I, I know the question you asked is loaded. I hope I've just been able to provide some context about me. <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. just the beginning. So can you tell us a little bit about the mission and the vision of your organization? Well, our mission, our mission is is very, very straightforward. It's to strengthen a network of underestimated and underserved entrepreneurs and founders through capacity building and access to resources that will encourage positive and economic participation. And our vision is to foster economic empowerment, financial inclusion, and representation for all inter underestimated or underrepresented entrepreneurs globally. Oh, that's great. I appreciate right. that. So what inspires you most about your work? Well, it's it's the faces that I see every day, right? And the the results, just the little the little steps, you know, that we are able to you know help these businesses that we work with take as we do this work on a daily basis you know um, and this is what this is what in inspires me this is what you know continues to amplify the the fact that you know the work there is need for the work that we're doing and there's a lot of stories around you know um you know that 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 we've curated over the last you know couple of years that we've gotten into doing this kind of work for the community that contributes to that Okay, that's great. So what kind of challenges or barriers do you face in your work and how are you overcoming them? Well, obviously, um, my, as an underrepresented entrepreneur myself, um, who's who now also represents the community, um, there is uh, a lot of, you know, um, there's a lot of misconceptions and expectations as to, uh, especially as someone who uh, runs an organization that you know has been funded by the government and you know with having to deal with folks who do not understand the parameters or the relationship between ourselves and the government and what that funding is supposed to be directed towards right so we're, we're faced with challenges of on a daily basis having to explain to uh, those people that 
You know, we are providing resources. We are not allowed to provide funding, right? There's organizations okay. who have been funded, who are uh, fund intermediaries that are allowed to provide funding, but we will right. provide you, the, we will provide you network, we will provide you resources, we will provide you knowledge, and we will provide you mentorship. And then we will connect you to our sister organizations that provide funding. And that's how right. we work, right? So um, personally, you know, just... Um, you know, navigating this and, you know, having to explain that and, you know, meeting people who do not, who takes a while to understand, to come to terms with that is, is what I would say stands out as a challenge that I've had to deal with on a daily basis. Thank you. And do you have a key set of priorities that you're working on right now that stand out? Well, um, our priorities are very, very uh, streamlined and straight, and that is being able to ensure that um, the entrepreneurs that work through our programs are at the end of the day connected with the right resources that they need after going through our program. So um, I want to say in care and post care. So we we don't want to be a revolving door. We're not a pro, just a program offering organization where people would just come and take programs and leave. We want we also we've built into our programming that after care and that one on one business advisory services, the chaperones, uh, the entrepreneurs that are going through our programs towards the right resources after working with them to determine what that right resource is. If it's funding, they get connected to funding. If it's mentorship, they get connected with mentorship. If it's network ecosystem network we have, we we have a, you know a bouquet of prestigious ecosystem partners that we work with and that because we do not have all the answers obviously so we connect them with those partners that can provide them with the right answers thank you so much that makes sense and, and it's very valuable like even the connection to where they can get the funding so we appreciate that and how do you feel about the future of black entrepreneurship in canada um, I, this is obviously uh, a fantastic, you know, beginning. The last couple of years has been historic, right, for the, for the Black entrepreneurship community um, with the government, you know, taking the right steps, you know, towards, you know, providing some funding to, um, you know, kind of spur up, you know, uh, some activities and some work, you know, within that space. Um, the government have done well, but obviously it's just, uh, I like to say it's just a, a scratch, right? It's just a tip mm -hmm. of the iceberg because, you know, um, this is this is a, 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 a demographic that has historically, you know, been, you know, obviously underrepresented, underfunded. There is a lot of uh, data to show that, you know, this, but this demographic has been underserved, but hey i see a future where this let this this allows us where we're where we are building the right foundation towards where we are supposed to be and i'm hoping that we can continue to partner with those uh you know um uh, philanthropic organizations and 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 as well as the government over you know a longer time than uh, you know then you know is, is right now being anticipated that way we can build a solid foundation to be able to ensure that um as immigrants continue to come into this country uh we we have the right uh, resources and organizations like ourselves are well positioned to be there to help them you know uh, ease in and you know draft the right resources and get them strong enough that now becomes you know uh, of economic advantage even to the country so help empower us to empower to help empower the people and the people will now empower the community and you know, just on an ongoing basis thank you absolutely and what is your ultimate goal what does success look like for you and your colleagues well obviously and uh, uh there is lots of talks around bias right systemic racism systemic bias um you know uh, uh, along the corridors of the work we do um we would love to see uh, a future where this is no longer a conversation yeah because a, a future where uh, we, we've not we have a well-informed community and a well-informed society uh, and uh, you know uh, a, a collaborative one at that where uh, allies are 
allies now understand the intricacies where organizations are not scared when they hear black where they are not scared when they hear bipoc you know where everybody is easy, easy and they realize that underneath the skin it's the same color right and there is really no skull, there is really uh, uh, no no creed or no race but you know uh, 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 people who are united you know by common goal common purpose and you know we can work together and we can continue to to grow up in an informed empowered community is what i would like to see that's great i think we right. can all appreciate that um, do you have any words of wisdom for emerging leaders or young people who are entering the ecosystem right now? Well, um, my, the, the, I have a, I have a default, you know, that I go to when it comes to, you know, um, uh, 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 words of wisdom, and it's it's one that has really, you know, empowered me lots, even as a as a leader myself, and that's uh, the words of uh, the great uh, Martin Martin Luther King that says um you it says um the words of Malibu say an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader con mm. concerns of all humanity you need to know that you know um it's it, it's not about you because if it's about you, then it's not enough of a course. It's about your children. It's about mm -hmm. your neighbors. It's about your community. And it's about the entire world. And that is the reason why, you know, the work is not just for one person. The work is for every one of us. And we need to put our hands together to ensure that we build a community that we we'll want to see our kids live in. Absolutely. So important. And uh, we appreciate that. I think everyone can do something with that. But do you have any uh, additional closing thoughts or calls to action for our community? Well, um, there's a few things that I like to say, you know, just from uh, a community standpoint and just understanding that, you know, I I've seen I've seen uh, um, communities where people live in silos, where people think it's other people's concern or other people's business to work at economic empowerment and uh, or any form of empowerment at all, you know, to work at creating, you know, uh, that kind of uh, a, 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 um, a, a, a system where we, we're all together and we are all putting our efforts and hands together to build our community. We just want to see more people stand up. We just, no matter what you are, no matter no matter what the contribution is, there is nothing too small that you can contribute right. to this community to ensure that we get to where we want to be as a people. Absolutely. Thank you for that. So again, we appreciate your time, your phenomenal leadership and everything you're doing with the BIPOC.com um, organization. Um, we want to also uh, close the way that we began by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we are on. We want to acknowledge our ancestors and those who toiled without compassion or compensation, as well as our elders and community stewards whose shoulders we continue to stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So Clement, thank you again, once again, for your leadership and for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate you.